Hello and welcome to Mint Canvas Studio. In today's video, we are excited to look at our Meal Planner 2.0. The revised version of our bestseller template now comes with the new features some of you suggested. We are so happy to give you a tool that you will love using and that will help you take control of your health and boost productivity. If you have purchased the new version of the template, I will explain in detail how to use it. If you already have the previous version, the link to download this new one will be sent to you. Let's take a look at the template now. We kept the original theme and style, but adjusted the layout to improve usability. The first page is the dashboard, an overview of your meal plan for the current week and month. At the top, there's a quote that you can personalize if you wish, the navigation menu, and the quick action menu with buttons to perform quick tasks. On the right, the weekly meal plan is shown on a calendar and as a board view. We prefer to use the calendar, but we wanted to give you the option to choose, as some people will use the template just for meal planning and grocery shopping. Below, on the left, there's a reminder of the current shopping list with all the items you need to buy. This column is just a view of your groceries. To edit it, I suggest you go either to My Kitchen or the Planner page which is more suited for this task. Next, you see the monthly calendar, which holds all your weekly meal plans. The calendar can become an archive you can refer to if you need inspiration in the future, a bit like a food journal, if you wish. You can add pages to both the weekly and monthly views or edit recipes inside your meal plans directly from the dashboard. But for planning, I suggest you use the dedicated page. On the left column, there's a unit converter that can be handy when preparing meals. The dashboard is the page I open when I want to check what I've planned for the day and start preparing meals. The footer section contains a toggle that holds all main databases. The ingredients database comes with 241 preloaded ingredients categorized by type. This will save you a lot of time when setting up the template. Take a look at the database and check if there are any ingredients you know you won't use, so you can delete them. You can also edit the type property and assign new types or change colors. The first checkbox you see refers to the shopping list. You will check it only when you have purchased an item. Staple indicates all ingredients that are essential for you. You can also assign a price to different ingredients if you want to set a budget or a reminder of what price you should pay for certain items. The quantity property refers to the shopping list and you will fill it every time you put an item in your shopping list to establish the quantity you want to buy. There's also a column to allocate the aisle and another to collect all your shops and assign your favorite for each ingredient. As I said, the first time you use this template, check out this database and see if you want to personalize something. The recipe library database collects 20 example recipes that you can keep or delete altogether. The same goes for the meal plan database. Just check the little checkbox here and select delete to get rid of the, of the example pages. Now you're ready to use this template to its full potential. Let's now visit the My Kitchen page. Here is where you can organize your pantry. You have the button menu at the top and the pantry overviews below. The first view holds all items that you have in stock grouped by type. You can check the checkbox to mark an item as a staple. If you realize you've run out of an ingredient, you can change its status here. If you choose Add to Shopping List, the item will populate your grocery list and disappear from this view. The second view lists all your staple ingredients. If you don't want to see certain categories, you can click the three dots on the database menu, go to Group, and edit the list here by clicking on the eye icon. We have set the database to only display categories that are not empty. Again, you can change the status of the ingredients here. The third view is a list of all ingredients grouped by type. The right column contains household items and has two example pages. You can add all the items you normally shop for. Just click on New Page here or use the button on the menu. You can add items to the shopping list and specify the quantity to buy here. 
The quantity property does not appear in the list on the left to avoid confusion, but you can amend this property inside each ingredient page if you need to. The last section contains a database with all your kitchen essentials. I've already created different categories and you can add all your items here to better organize your kitchen. You can also add articles to your wish list, assign a category, save the link to purchase them and make a note of their prices. This view can also serve as a database for gifts, for example, since you can input items you want to give to your loved ones. Now, let's jump into the heart of the template, the planner page. Here is where you do your meal planning and prepping. At the top, there's a quick action menu and below on the left, there is a database that collects all meal prep tasks if you do meal prepping. You can edit the pages, add new ones and check the checkboxes when you complete a task. On the right column, you have the meal planning section with three database views. The first one is a table. Here you can add new pages or menus for each day of the week and select recipes you want to have for every meal. Finally, if you input a date for each page, this will disappear from this table and appear on the board and the calendar, but only if the date chosen belongs to the current week. Otherwise, you can still see your menus on the monthly calendar. To make things easy and quick, use the button to add seven new pages to the table every time you start a new meal planning session. The second view is the weekly board that will also display the total calories for each day. That is, if you assigned calories to your recipes. The last view is your weekly calendar. You can add pages directly to the calendar by clicking the plus button, we just thought that having the table at the beginning would make meal planning more structured and quick. But feel free to adopt whatever system works for you. The monthly overview is in the toggle below and lets you access and review all your weekly menus for the current month and the previous ones as well. Now, when you plan your meals, you want to have quick access to your recipe library, which you can find right below the planning section. So, Let's say you're deciding what to plan for your week. You have created your pages in the table, but instead of looking through the properties here, you can first scroll down and browse your saved recipes. When you find the one you want to cook, look up its name in the relation property here and add it to your menu. You have different views for different categories, and the new cool feature we've included is that each recipe card will display how many ingredients you currently have in your pantry and if a recipe is ready to be prepared. We thought this might help you decide what to cook, especially when you have guests at, at home, for example, or you have to prepare something quickly. Another new feature comes from a suggestion by a lovely customer who asked us to include a forgotten recipes section. It's this column here on the left. Inside each recipe page, there is a property called Last Prepared. It's a date property you can edit each time you prepare a recipe. If you forget, you just have to browse the monthly calendar and easily spot the last time you made the recipe. If the date is more than six months ago, the recipe will automatically appear on the forgotten section. This will help you remember recipes you might want to prepare again or decide whether or not to keep a recipe you didn't like that much. So thank you, Antoinette, for this suggestion. Now let's take a look at the recipe library. This page acts as your recipe archive and works as a cookbook that collects all your favorite meals. The page has different sections, starting from the All Recipes view grouped by meal type. You then have your Favorites tab and views grouped by course, like in a cookbook. There's also a Want to Try section for all new recipes you're curious to try, and of course, the forgotten recipes. All these sections are views of the same database with a filter to show only a specific category. You can edit the order of the views if you prefer. Let's open a recipe page and see how it works. Firstly, let's generate the template by clicking on New Recipe. 
This template version takes full advantage of Notion's new feature that allows you to customize the layout of the pages. At the top, after the recipe title, you see the status, the meal type, and the difficulty. You can also add a cover photo. I like to add the one that comes with the original recipe. Copy the images link, select Add Cover, and paste the link here. If you don't have an image source, you can use the Unsplash library to find an appropriate image. Below, there's a list of properties, starting with the link for the original recipe. You can assign the cuisine, the prep time and serving info, and note the calories. These are usually provided with each recipe. You can also edit the last prepared property and mark the recipe as a favorite. As for the ingredient status, you don't have to edit this property since it's a formula that works automatically. Below this list, there's a section containing any related recipes. This is a relation property that connects matching recipes. It looks something like this. The last section is dedicated to the ingredients. When you add a new recipe to your library, you need to assign all its ingredients by using this relation to the ingredients database. Let's take this lemon asparagus pasta as an example. I'll open the link to the original recipe and copy the ingredients here. Then I will start searching for the first ingredient using the relation property. Do not click on the new button here since that will add a new page to the ingredients database. This database already contains more than 200 ingredients, so it's best to use the searching option first to avoid creating copies of the same ingredient. Click on the little magnifying glass and type the name of the ingredient. If it appears on the list, you can click the plus button here to link the page. Going back to the original recipe, I'll continue linking all the ingredients, adding new pages only if needed. Once all the ingredients are linked, you will notice that the pantry and shopping section of the template will populate with the same list. This section is made for when you meal plan. If you add a recipe to your weekly plan, you can open its page and check if you have all the ingredients necessary in your pantry. If not, change the status of an item here and it will automatically be added to the shopping list. You can also use the quantity property to specify how much you need to buy for each ingredient. This information will appear on your shopping list as well. So, to recap, the quantity property does not refer to the amount you have in your pantry or the amount needed for the recipe, but only to the quantity you need to buy for each item. Inside the recipe template, you also have a space to note directions and tips. And finally, you have a kitchen converter and a place to embed the video for the recipe. The last page of the template is the shopping list. As you may have noticed, the layout is clean and simple. That's because you can add this page as a widget to your phone screen and access it whenever you're out shopping. Check the checkboxes next to the item's name every time you put something in your shopping cart. The shopping list contains all items with a status of Add to shopping list, grouped by shop. You can edit the shop property and add your own favorite shopping spots. You can then decide where you, where you want to buy certain items by assigning a shop to an ingredient. The No Shop category appears at the top and contains ingredients you can buy anywhere since you don't have a preference. If this system doesn't work for you and you don't want to group items by shop or you want to change the order of the categories, you can simply delete the group option of the database here or edit the order on the list. Additionally, you can create another grouping rule. For example, you can group items by aisle. In any case, you can personalize this shopping list to fit your specific needs. You can input quantities from the recipe card, as I showed you earlier, or directly from the shopping list. You can assign aisles and even note down items' prices. If you don't need to see a property, simply click on its name and select Hide in View. When you're done shopping, instead of manually changing all item status, you can use the buttons I've created. The first button is going to automatically put every purchased item in your pantry as an in-stock item. The Clear Quantity button will clear the quantity column for every purchased item. 
The shopping list will then be empty of all things you've bought and only the items you did not purchase will remain. You can then decide whether to keep them for the next shopping session or change their status to out of stock. One last thing to note is that the price property is in US dollars by default, but you can change it to your currency by clicking on the property's name, selecting Edit Property and choosing your currency from the list. This concludes our tour of the updated meal planner and recipe library. I really hope you liked this update. We wanted to make the template even more practical and time-saving for you. We are very curious to know your thoughts, so write in the comments your favorite feature and what you would like to see in the next update or template. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.